So what we do is we consult widely, we look at all the evidence, we work with practitioners, whether they be advisors or farmers or foresters or whatever is relevant, and we come up with our best go at providing a description of the action and the aim of the action and the rules that we think is going to strike the right balance, where we can get some confidence we're going to see the outcomes, we're going to get value for money, but we are leaving enough flexibility for farmers and others to be able to do things in a way that's going to work on their farming. So if you look at the differences between the iterations of SFI in the last three years, you will see quite a lot of movement where we've had that sort of feedback, either from advisors, farm managers, other experts, etc. So we definitely are listening, but we can't always react instantly, and we shouldn't react instantly to every single concern, because if we do, we will end up with a hyper-prescriptive scheme again, and then you'll all be saying, I thought you were going to make this less prescriptive. This is rubbish. I can't make it work. So we've got to triage the things that come in, and so in the last two or three years, we do a lot more of it. I would say we're kind of at a point of inflection here, where we've really laid the groundwork now for working in this way, but the next two or three years are absolutely critical to really getting that sort of thing right, so that we can have a proper partnership. In terms of the length of agreement, so they're gonna, there's some actions which you can do over three years. There are some over five and there are some over ten in higher tier schemes. And that's already the case five years and ten years in countryside stewardship, actually. So what we'll do is we'll have more actions that are available on three-year terms if you want them. You can do whatever combination of actions you like. If you've got some five-year actions, then your agreement covers those for five years. And if you've got some three-year actions, then you need to do those for three years. And after that, you can add some more three-year things in if that's what you want to do. What we're looking for here is minimum bureaucracy, maximum flexibility. If you applied for SFI, you have to get your land use and your land cover right in order for the right actions to show up to you. And that was a sort of tactical way for us to be able to automate the question of is this land eligible or not. And that automation, by the way, along with others, has allowed us to reduce the processing time for applications from several months in CS historically and in the S5 pilot, at least like seven months on average, down to a week or two. So it's really good, that automation, but it's not perfect. And in particular, that issue is on our list to make better when we release the updated offer this summer. So we're trying to find a better way to assess land eligibility that doesn't involve you tying yourself in knots to try and get land use and land cover right. What we've done in the short term is make it easier for you to do those changes. So it's less of a kind of massive pain but it's not quite where we'd like it to be just yet, and we've got it on our list. If you've got a specific issue relating to a parcel where it's not showing up correctly, contact the RPA and they can fix it for you. And we've made it easier for you to do that. What we're talking about is avoiding those errors in the first place and taking out that hassle as much as we possibly can. The RLE1 process is better now than it was, but it is still the dreaded RLE1, I know. We'd rather you just didn't have to bother with that kind of stuff if we can make it possible. But if you do have to bother, we really want it to be a lot more efficient because it's a pain for you. And frankly, it's a pain for us. We don't want our people to be spending their time processing things like that when they could be helping. So if, but if you, have, you don't have to wait until summer. If you've got a specific issue, contact RPA and they should be able to help. We met farmers in East Anglia who said, why aren't you doing anything about our upside down hedgerows here? which is what we've got. We don't have hedgerows, we've got upside down ones. You should be paying us to maintain those. And we will, that's part of the 2024 offer, thanks to that feedback. And we do absolutely recognise that point. Not just yet. We have got a plan internally as to when that will be. It will be the summer, but we know that everybody really wants to know when we're going to publish the information, which will be in the spring. Uh, and when we're going to open the scheme, which we'll do in the summer, we will very shortly announce the timescales for you so that you can know. But I'm not going to do that until I'm confident we can meet them, which will be very shortly.